The National Swine Registry is a global leader in swine pedigree services, documented swine genetics, marketing, and also education outreach. The NSR prides itself on enhancing the value of pedigreed swine, maintaining breed integrity, providing member education, as well as youth development experiences. Now today we are going to dive into the deeply important topic of biosecurity. First, we'd like to introduce Dr. Brett Marsh, Chief Veterinarian for the state of Indiana. He'll give us a quick look at what biosecurity means, not only for you, but the greater swine industry. Well, biosecurity, as the name suggests, is you're providing security against a, bi a biological threat. And so if we're trying to protect our herds, swine herds in this case, to a biological threat, we need to evaluate where that threat may come from. How could it enter a herd? It could come from live animals that are brought onto the premises. And that's important consideration if you're purchasing animals to come onto the property, that they're properly isolated before they're introduced to the balance of the herd, just to make sure any diseases that may have been introduced with those new additions are not introduced to the primary herd. Another way it could be brought in are on people, people traffic onto the farm. We need to wash our hands, make sure our boots are clean, or the vehicles that we traveled in are also cleaned and disinfected before we travel on and off a of property. So it's important for us to consider the movement of people and the products that are on those conveyances. So whether it's feed or other things that are brought to the farm, it's important for us to consider that those are a potential risk for our herd. And of course, we're doing all this to protect that population, to improve our productivity, to improve our uh, profitability, and certainly we don't at want animals that are affected with diseases that, if, if nothing else, get them sick, or certainly causes mortality within the population. Other things that we need to keep in mind is carcass disposal. So if we have mortality, are we properly disposing of those carcasses so the disease that they may have had doesn't spread to other populations? We need to consider food waste. Sometimes food waste can harbor these viruses for long periods of time. And so if we're feeding those food waste back to pigs, it's a way to continue to con convey that and to distribute that virus within a population. So there are a number of things to keep in mind. And depending upon where you are in the world, the possibility exists with feral pigs, wild pigs. In the United States, we have several of our states that have feral or wild pig populations that be, could be a reservoir for infection which could also exist in many parts of the world. So you need to consider to isolate your domestic populations from free ranging populations so that you don't have a potential disease transmission in that way as well. So there are lots of ways to begin to protect a population by considering from a security standpoint, when you're dealing with biological threats, how do you keep those threats away from the farm? As we mentioned, it could be live animals. It could be people and traffic movements on and off of property. It could be everything from carcass disposal to food waste to wild animals that could deliver those viruses to your farm as well. One of the important things for producers to consider is that everyone has a role. Every producer who has a pig has a role to play in biosecurity because the weakest link could present, present a huge challenge for the populations as a whole. It's important for all producers to recognize that the biosecurity they maintain on their farm contributes to the overall success of the state or country or province that you're in and then the, the national goal of protecting populations as well. It has huge implications for the ability to, for these populations to remain healthy, to have products that can be sold domestically and internationally, and maintain that free status for products to continue to move in commerce. Wow, very interesting. Thank you so much, Dr. Marsh. And now that we have a high level understanding of what biosecurity is, let's take a deeper dive into specific areas on your farm and how they play a role in your herd health. So the key in any biosecurity plan is preventing the introduction of a pathogen. That's the main goal. So setting up an effective health plan will help keep your herd healthy and in turn increase your bottom line. In terms of disease prevention, reoccurring themes include hygiene, ventilation, and reducing stress. Maintaining good biosecurity through every part of the production cycle performed by everyone on the farm every day will aid in preventing disease outbreaks. Now the main paths of introduction of disease into your herd 
can be broken down into very distinct categories. So listen here, direct introduction from other pigs, other animals like rodents, insects, or even birds, areas spread through the air, and then people, whether they be employees, visitors, or maintenance contractors. Other avenues such as trucks, tools, feed, or supplies. So let's take a deeper look into each of these vectors of disease introduction and see where on your farm you can mitigate the risk. Now, if your herd cannot be managed as a closed herd, meaning no live animal introductions, you should ensure that breeding stock are purchased from high health status herds and sustainably quarantined generally for 30 to 60 days before introduction. Testing these animals in isolation will ensure they are not bringing any unwanted bugs onto your farm. And it's also necessary to acclimate new animals to the farm herd health by feeding back manure from the farm to the animals in isolation or cummingly coal cells to the new additions prior to entry into the main farm. In addition to implementing the sow herd vaccination program, your isolation unit needs to be away from the main farm and kept in good repair to provide a comfortable experience for your new purchases. So if someone from the farm is responsible for overseeing the isolation facility, they need to perform these duties at the end of the day so they can take two showers before returning to their normal farm chores the next day. Next, we look at other animals that can transport disease into your herd. Birds, rodents, and insects can be carriers of unwanted disease, so having properly maintained facilities can keep these pests to a minimum. If your ventilation system has to have open sides or windows, bird nesting or sustainable barrier must be in place to eliminate birds from entering your barn. Rodent control procedures, whether they be poison bats or traps, must be in place and maintained. Cleaning in and around barns, whether it be manure, spilled feed, or dead disposal, will also minimize the risk of rodent or insect infestation. Proper fly control, whether it be through enhanced cleanliness, fly spray, or feed additives, should be maintained as well, so keep that in mind. And then the third path of disease introduction in area spread or spread through aerosol transmission in the air. The most common way to minimize the risk is by physical separation of facilities or site location for your barns. Maintaining at least 1.5 miles from any source of pigs and at least three miles from groups of 200 or more pigs is a minimum distance needed to reduce the possibility of aerosol transmission of the disease. For your nucleus or genetic farms, double or triple those minimum distances are recommended. So if possible, determine which direction the prevailing wind blows in your area. Your barns are more protected if they are upwind of the nearest farms with pigs. And then the next vector for disease introduction and spread is people. While the most obvious threat is from visitors or trespassers, employees can be carriers of the disease as well. Employees should have no contact with pigs other than those on the farm. It is preferred they don't live in the same household with someone who works with other pigs. If an employee is around other pigs for some reason, they need to be at least 12 hours away from those pigs and two showers before entry into that farm. Visitors to the farm should be at least 48 hours pigs free before the entry to that farm. Your facilities should be shower in and out. Anyone coming to the farm, whether employee, visitor, or contractor, leave their clothing on the dirty side, completely shower, and then wear the clothes and boots provided on the clean side. Now there must be clean and dirty discrimination for all people and products coming into and out of the farm. Maintaining a visitor log also helps to ensure adherence to those rules as well as a tracking mechanism in case of a disease outbreak. Everyone entering the farm must adhere to these biosecurity measures every single time they enter that farm. It only takes one lapse to cause a disease outbreak. The final major contributor to disease spread are non-living items of use at a farm. These can include trucks, feed, equipment, tools, etc. Anything coming onto the farm from an outside could be a possible contaminant. All items that enter the farm should be cleaned, disinfected, and dried before entering the farm. 
Large items like trucks, trailers, or equipment should not be permitted inside the farm fence, but should be cleaned off-site, disinfected, and then allowed to dry for 24 hours prior to entering the farm property. The drying piece is as important as the cleaning and disinfection. Smaller items like vaccines and medication, tools, small equipment, or parts should be disinfected and dried prior to entry. Some farms have specialized rooms where items are delivered, fogged with disinfectant, and heated to dry. This process minimizes the risk of contaminated services bringing disease into your herd. While feed is a low-risk pathway for disease introduction, it can lead to the most devastating losses. Contaminated feed goes directly to the pigs and can cause an outbreak pretty quickly. The keys to minimizing the disease risk associated with feed can be narrowed down to the following. Purchasing raw materials from trusted sources and processing your own feed. Purchasing your processed feed from trusted sources and using as little bag feed as possible. This helps with rodent control as well. Having storage available for 30 to 60 days inventory would be ideal, but we know this is generally not practical on most farms. Most pathogens that travel in feed are rendered inactive when held for extended periods without introduction to an animal host. And now that we've looked at the ways to prevent disease from entering your herd, let's take a quick look at what you can do to manage health within your herd, whether it be high health or a farm with chronic disease issues. Always flow people through the farm from the highest health status to lowest or most vulnerable to least vulnerable to disease. Wash, disinfect, and dry your hands frequently. Maintain boot baths at the entry to every building and farrowing room. And make sure these are cleaned and refilled with a disinfectant daily. Use as many disposable supplies as possible. That includes needles, syringes, gloves, insemination rods should be single use only and then disposed of. Take care of the isolation facility as the last chore of the day and then remove deceased animals as soon as possible and move them to an area for compost, insurrection, or off-site disposal. If dead pigs are removed for off-site disposal, the employee responsible cannot return to the farm until the following day. Now we understand this information has been extremely high level and doesn't encompass every detail of biosecurity, but points out the areas of greatest risk of disease on your farm. Now let's review some of the basics of a quality biosecurity program. All employees and visitors must be on board with the mission of herd health, coming to work in clean clothes and adhering to the shower in, shower out protocol. Maintain a quality relationship with your veterinarian, Cleaning, disinfecting, and drying are crucial steps in any biosecurity process, whether it be trucks, equipment and tools, or farrowing, nursery, or finishing facilities between groups of pigs. Having a designated perimeter for trucks and vehicles entering the farm, limit visitors, and then minimize the introduction of new pigs. And if this can't be attained, make sure you are following proper isolation and animal introduction procedures, monthly or quarterly health audits by your veterinarian, as well as proper vaccination protocols. Also have a plan for rodent, bird, fly, or other animal control. And although the content of this video may seem pretty simple, it is perhaps one of the most important things you can do to catapult your farm's success. A healthy hogs eat, grow, and performs better, creating a more enjoyable and profitable experience for you. We are here to assist you from pedigree paper to disinfectant power. Visit www.nationalswine.com to learn more about our biosecurity standards today.